Good morning, everyone. Let's start off with a word of prayer, then we get started with our devotion. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Father God, we ask you to bless us and keep us as we go to work, go to school, wherever we're going to, Father God, be with us. Help us make great decisions for our life. Help us to listen to the Holy Spirit. But Father God, as we read this uh, devotional or hear it, bless us, Father God. Father God, help us to get understanding and help us apply it to our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so today's key verse is 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brother, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Topic, living in harmony through disagreements. Affirmations. I am... I'm going to read it, and you can say it behind me if you like, okay? I'm going to pause behind each one to give you time. I am to be better. I am going to be a better me. I am allowing God to restore me. I am having peace with all men. I am a Christ seeker. When we disagree with people or have an argument, we have to be people that aim to comfort one another in love and peace. And I realize that's hard to do with some people. It's hard to get people to communicate and hash things out without it being he said, she said thing. But in the word, it tells us to live in peace. A lot of times you have two people that will stay so mad at one another that they forget what the problem is or what they are arguing about. And I personally have seen this online and in my own life. We can't allow the enemy to cause us to come out of character, to fill us with malice, bitter, anger, and strife. We have to ignore what's going on and make sure we walk in peace. You hear people say, I don't have to, I don't have to like them, but I love God. No, we must look past our differences and say, I love them. I'm willing to do it in love. I can't say this would be easy because it's not. If we all can be transparent, this is hard to do. But we must move in a spirit of love if we call ourselves God's people, Christ seekers, lovers of God. Hebrews 12, 14, strive for peace with everyone in the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The word tells us to strive for peace. We have to stop allowing the spirit of confusion to take over and strive for peace. If we notice that every time we are conversing with someone, there's a problem, we have to learn to take our issues before the Lord and ask the Lord to help us find peace in whatever is happening. We oftentimes allow the spirit of confusion and aggression to control the situation when we must allow peace to reside in us. For us to walk in the light of the Lord, we must do all holy things. A lot of times we forget things like this is wrong. We constantly looking at sin as big, looking at sin as big sin, as small sin, and we shouldn't. We forget strife and bitterness and anger are not of God. Yes, things of flesh, such as sexual morality and other sins, tend to be the sins we like to talk about. Still, we must not forget that one sin isn't bigger than the other. 1 Peter 3 and 11, let him turn away from evil and be good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. When we avoid arguments and things, it doesn't make us look weak. It doesn't make us a, as a loser or anything like that. It makes us look like peace seekers in the eyes of the Lord. And it makes us look like people that are pursuing peace of God. Because when there is converse, con- controversy, chaos, the confusion, you will feel the presence of God leave because the Holy Spirit will leave. You won't feel the presence of God. The Holy Spirit will leave. Second Timothy, Second Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. God can't give us peace if we are too busy being problematic. We have to learn God isn't in that. God isn't in confusion. We would rather for us to stay silent than to argue. But if you just say something, we must, if you just have to say something, we must let it be about peace and lead, let it lead to peace. Peace can be given into us when we strive and keep our conversation about God. God can't allow us to lead others and elevate us if we don't know how to do everything in a peaceful way. No, I I know sometimes we want to let others know what we are thinking and we want to be bold and stick up for ourselves. But God is telling us today that peace is found in him and through him. Today, if you feel that you're in a situation that you speak, that you must speak up or you must do what you want, 
but let it be of peace. Let it start with peace and love. We are going to have a we're going to have arguments and disagreements and such, but God wants us to do everything in peace. Our life must be a demo of us walking in God's light. I find it easier when I have my situations to God and not allow my emotions to do the talking. Ask God, how do he want you to handle things and to give you the words to speak? He would do it if you ask, but if you but we must be willing to listen. Prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to be everything you want of us. Lord, help us to be understanding. Lord, help us to wait for you and not speak out our emotions, our anger. Help us to be connected with you in every way. Lord, we are sorry if we haven't done that. We are sorry if we've been letting our flesh lead us. Lord, we desire to be what you want, and we don't want to be bitter or angry. Or angry. We want to be happy and joyful. So we ask today, God, that you direct our path in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So today's topic is leaving, living in a harmony through disagreements. So this week, it seems like the Holy Spirit is leading us to talk about how to conduct ourselves when and how to love one another. Um, I must say that this is a tough, a tough uh, devotional sometime. This, I can say that sometimes God gives me the toughest devotionals to do sometimes. Because they, they reflect sometimes what I'm going through or what I see other people are going through. And so the Holy Spirit has me to write these devotionals. And um, it's hard to have peace with some people, to be honest. If we all can be transparent, it's hard. Because some people just rubbed you the wrong way. And you have people that will constantly say things just to see what you're going to say. You have people that are just sitting around waiting to see, oh, is she going to have a, a fit? Or, oh, is she going to have an ugly word? Is she going to preach what she teach? Is she going to preach what she tell everyone they should they should do? And you have people that would do that. But what we must do is look beyond them. And that is hard. It's hard because we have to keep peace with all men. Um, I had a, a situation recently where I had someone that was constantly bothering me. And um, I've been through this this test before and um, this with a different person, but now it's with someone else. And I kept thinking to myself, God, how do you want me to conduct this? And then he gave me this to write. And when he gave me this to write, mind you, this I write my devotionals or the devotionals of God, the Holy Spirit, a week in advance. So when he gave me this, I was thinking to myself, no way. <laughs> It's no way you having me to write about something I'm actually really, really, really going through. And so I had to learn through that, that no matter how this person makes me feel, no matter how much this person irritates me and tries to belittle me and embarrass me, I can't step out of character. We have to be people that keep ourselves in character. No, I don't think God wants us just to take everything on the chin. But he do want us to turn the other cheek. He do want us to love one another. In order to love someone, you have to have the spirit of the Holy Spirit in you, leading you and guiding you how to love. Sometimes you have people you just can't get along with. So you, it's best to create a distance between you and them so you won't cause a problem. That's not a bad thing. But ask the Holy Spirit at all times, how do you want me to conduct this? Because this is tough. Ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Because I want to handle it this way. And most of the time, the way we want to handle it, <laughs> it's not the right way. We always want to put people in their place and, and make sure they hear what they hear what I have to say, you know, and we can't have that kind of attitude. We have to be people that seek peace. And like I said, don't get me wrong, it, it is very frustrating. I, I, you have days that you cry or you be very angry. But you must center your emotions and give them to God and ask God, God, I had a terrible day. This is not going the way I want. How do you want me to conduct this? Because right now, I'm losing my cool. And he will show you how. But we have to be willing and able to listen. When we ask the Holy Spirit to, to help us with something, one, we must listen. Two, we must bring it to him. Three, we must be willing to accept what he's going to say. 
And that's the thing that when we ask them and we don't do it, how do you expect them to help you with the next one if you're not going to listen? You see what I'm saying? I might have said that out of order, but you all get the point. We must be people that bring every situation to the Holy Spirit and place it at his feet and say, this is what I'm, I'm looking at. Please help me stay in character. Please don't let me get out of character. And he would do it. So let's, let's look at a few reference verses. It maybe give us some more clarity. But like I said, this week we have talked about three or four times how to conduct ourselves when we have a problem with someone. The Holy Spirit is trying to talk to all of us. The Holy Spirit is trying to show us how to be better people because in today's society, everybody wants to pick up a gun. They want to use ugly words. They want to do things to people, items like key their car, you know, stuff like that. It's not of God. That's confusion. God wants to be able to handle things and handle people and do things in the right way. And if you're walking in Christ, the right way is always peace, always love, always understanding. Okay, so our first verse today is Romans 12. If you have your Bible, go to Romans 12. Sorry, I'll give me a drink of water. Go to verse 8. Okay, so... It says, if it, is, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, if, if it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it digitally. Digitally. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. See, what Paul is trying to tell us is that whatever we do, what That's not the key. That's not where it's supposed to took us to. Hold on. For some reason that's not the first second time this has happened. Sorry about this. Hmm. That's that's the odd when I typed it in. It was pulled up a different verse. Okay. Romans 12 18 says, if it is possible. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. He said, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. He's saying, Paul is telling us that everything else failed. Chaos is going on. It all depends on you live in peace. If everything's relying on how you act, how you conduct yourself, how others view you, live in peace. If this person's talking to you and they're saying things you don't like and you're standing there and you're saying to yourself, oh God, she is about to get it. Oh, she's about to get it. She's going to get every piece of me when she get through talking. It's up to you how this ends. So he said, if it's up to you, live in peace. That means hold your tongue. That's going to be hard to do. Because you have people that are going to say things to you. And you're wondering, I don't want to live in peace right now. I want to live in complete chaos. I'm telling you, the spirit of confusion moves fast. I've seen it. And I even see it on the news. You see it on the news. One minute, things can be going one way. The next minute, you see people having words. And people are stepping out of context. You know, stepping out of character. We, we've seen it at a war show between Chris Rock, Rock and Will Smith. We've seen it on, on, on the air with two reporters having a simple debate. One reporter gets a little loose with the lips. The other one puts the other one in his place. But one of us have to be the one that holds peace. And sometimes you have to say, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. We're going to agree to disagree. Thank you. That's having peace. And I'm not, and let me tell you this much, you're not going to get there overnight. Mm -mm, you're not. The Holy, some, some of you might, some of you might not. It depends on the person. It depends on what you're dealing with in your life. If you have a temper problem, if you have an anger problem, if you have a problem with controlling your mouth and letting God be the keeper of your lips, you're gonna, not going to be able to do this overnight. I promise you, you're not. And that's okay. It's not okay that you did it, but it's okay if you slip. 
But you have to be the one, like Paul says, if it depends on you, do it in peace. Be peace. We have to choose whether we walk in holiness. It's, it's like being at a crossroad. Do I walk and say, hey, I'm going to agree to disagree. I'm going to leave you to it. You, you have a blessed day. And they're going to look at you strange because they're, they're waiting for you to pop off. Or you could be the one that says, okay, it's about to go down. People better pack up their bags. It's about to go down because I'm about to have it out. Everybody mom will send me home. No. No, no, no. No one's going to send you home. You're going to pray. And you're going to redirect everything to peace. Even if that's you saying, okay, that's fine. And walking away. Or ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me the right words to say. But sometimes the Holy Spirit wants you to hold your peace. Because we never can say what's completely on our mind to someone. You can't do it. Because it's not right. And now I'm not teaching. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not trying to teach us how to be punks. Because I know someone's going to say, well, you're teaching us how to be punks. You teach us how to lay down and take it. No. No one is teaching no one how to do that. The Holy Spirit is teaching us how to have peace because that is what is wrong now. That is why people go in schools and, and shoot up schools and shoot up places and throw hot coffee on people, throw their drinks on the people in, in, the, in the window or bring in sandwiches in places and ready to fight the cashier. No. If that person would have took a moment when that sandwich is made wrong and said, I'm not going to act like this. If that person would have took a minute before they loading, loading their bullets up and say, this is not the way to handle things. If people will let go of the spirit of bitterness, confusion, these steps, these things would happen. And if they will say, hey, let me live in peace. But people don't walk in the light of God. So they want to conduct themselves in a different way. And that is fine. But do not entertain it. Because the moment you do, you're, you're the one that's not living in peace. You're the one that's living out of peace and you're not walking in love. Okay, let's go on to our second verse. First Peter 3. First Peter 3. If you get to it, go to verse 11. Okay. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. This is from the English Standard Version, okay? So let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Let him turn away from evil. Turn away from the argument. Let go of the argument. Don't let the argument consume you. I've had it happen to me several times where I let the situation consume me. I let where people's words get to me. And it's a different outcome than what the Holy Spirit wanted. Turn away from it. If someone try to approach you with an argument, tell them, I, I don't want to argue with you. If, if let's, let's find a solution to this. Let's pray. And a lot of people are taken off guard when you tell them, let's pray. <laughs> a lot of people are not going to pray. Or if you don't want to do that, just say, hey, I don't want to argue. Let's, let's not argue. Right, let's agree to disagree. Great words to use, okay? It tells us here, let him seek peace and pursue it. You must seek it and pursue it. That means you must at all costs seek peace and go after it. Even if the conversation goes really far left and this person wants to fight, do all you can to leave the situation and not fight this person. Do not let an argument get to that point where you're physically getting an altercation with someone. That is confusion. That is aggression. That's anger. That's bitterness. We talked about this this week. Don't let it get there. Just tell the person, hey, let, let's, we're not agreeing on this topic. 
Okay, and I, I don't want to argue with you. So let's just agree to disagree. Let's just leave it like that. We're going to have arguments. And you and me both, for some reason, are not getting along. And that's okay. Let's just not argue, okay? So however you want to do, you do it. However I want to do, I'm going to do it, okay? Leave the, leave the argument just like that. Be, be, be peaceful and pursue it. And the Holy Spirit will help lead the way. The Holy Spirit will show you the rest. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you words to say to this person. But the words he's going to give you, do not put your own spin to it. Do not put your own spin to it saying, well, that's a little watered down. Let me add my own spin. No, because the words that the Holy Spirit give you is going to always lead to peace. It's never going to start controversy. You can look in the Bible when Peter spoke, Paul spoke. They spoke in front of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The Holy Spirit immediately took over. And wherever they said led to peace in the right words that he wanted to say. He, it was the right words that he wanted them to say. It wasn't their own. And when we walk in the light of the Lord, we must be people that always do what we can to seek peace. Because even when Jesus had disagreements with people, people would try to rile him up to just put him in a trap to see what he would say. He knew it. So he will always have something clever to say to them that always circle back to the word. No, we are Jesus, but we have Jesus living inside us. We have the Holy Spirit living inside us. So we must take other ways than our fist, than a gun, than getting in someone's face, be loud talking. We must pursue peace. We must be people that seek peace. If we're running and seeking and doing all we can to see the Lord, we must always seek peace. And I know that's hard to do in, in this world. Okay, let's go to our last verse. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, 1 through 3. I wanted to take these three verses because they um it's a chunk of it. And um I should have probably started with that one, but it's fine. Okay, so we're going to take this in chunks. Therefore, if you have an encouragement encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in his spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one spirit of one mind. It, Paul is telling us here that if we're going to be like Christ, we must be tender, we must be compassionate, we must be completely in the same mind state of Christ. He also says, do nothing out of selfishness, ambition, vain conceit, rather in humility, other value others above yourself. We must do everything in humility. Sometimes when we argue with people, people hurt our pride. So because they hurt our pride, we're ready to put ourselves above what we think the Lord wants us to do. We're ready to put people in their place. Can't do it. It, it tells us here that we must be like-minded. When Jesus put someone in their place, he did it in a very tender, compassionate way. Because what you got to understand is that some people that you're arguing with, they have a spirit of confusion in them, a spirit of anger and bitterness. So any situation they can take, and they can make it bigger and they can point out someone they can pick on. They're going to do it. So you're just adding fuel to the flame. So you must take a different approach. And I can tell you, it's going to be hard. Like I said, it's going to be hard to do. But you must be the one that seek peace. Have a Christ-like mind and do it passionate and tenderly. Compassion and tenderly, not harsh. Tender means to say delicate words. Tender means to turn the other cheek. Tender means not to, they go high, you go low, you go lower. If, if people think that's funny, and, and I'll be honest when people do say it, it's funny, but it's not of the Lord. I, I've heard one person say, well, when, when someone go low, I go lower than low. No, you don't go lower than low. You go high. You go high as heaven. <laughs> okay. You go high as heaven and you go with a Christ-like mind and you say, you know what? And you say this here, you know what, devil? 
I'm not going to give you the victory today. You have a blessed day. I rebuke you. You're not about to destroy my day. You're not about to bring chaos in my life. You're not about to bring division in my heart. You're not about to bring bitterness in me. We must rebuke Satan before he gets started. So we do everything out of peace, out of compassion. So today, if you're dealing with a situation where you're constantly being tried on every side, God is trying to bring something out of you and bring something in you. God is trying to elevate you, not lower you. So right now we're on the elevator. So which buttons will you push? Are you going to push the high buttons or are you going to push the low buttons? This week, the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to look at things in a different and better way. But it's up to us to do it. It's up to us to push the button and say, I'm going to go high. And I'm not going to go low. We've got to find harmony in disagreements. Ask the Lord to help you. Put yourself before the Lord and fast and pray and ask the Lord to help you. And he will do it. So I pray you all understood this, this devotional. Like I said, this devotional was, um, it got me last week and it's, it's is he's letting me serve it to y'all this week, you know. But this week we're talking about loving one another. We cannot be a Christian or say that we are God if we cannot keep peace with, with all men. It's okay to lose your cool. It happens. But when you do, pick yourself up. Go apologize. Try it again. Try it again and again and again. But do it with the Lord's strength and you will be able to do it. Okay, remember Jesus loves you and I love you too. Have a blessed day. Thank you.